Thanks so much for coming this afternoon. My name is Mike Colino. I'm the CTO of the Cloud Native Consulting Practice at Solstice. Solstice is a pivotal system integrator partner. We're also platinum sponsors here this week at Spring One Platform. I have the pleasure today of being on stage with Ahu Chapgar. Ahu is the managing director and global head of technology channels at Citibank inside of their treasury and trade services line of business. Aside from being a senior IT executive, Ahu is regularly playing the role of an agent of change inside of the world's largest companies, including PayPal and most recently, MasterCard. Ahu, welcome to the stage. Thank you, Mike. Happy to be here, Thanks. really. Uh, so I want to just set the table right away. I think uh, who has a phenomenal story um, in terms of the things that he's accomplished and he's seen, as well as the challenge that lays ahead at City. So let's just dive right into the work that you did at MasterCard. Maybe folks here aren't familiar with this, the, the, the outcomes uh, that you were able to deliver and that MasterCard uh, it has been delivering over the course of the last couple of years as it relates to digital. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, you know, um, I was at PayPal when PayPal was a much smaller company. We had, I think, there were like 200 developers at the time. Um, so when I got a call from MasterCard, you know, it, it wasn't really about, well, I, I didn't want to go do a PayPal all over again, right? right? And yeah. so uh, it was really about, hey, you know, what, what else do they have? What did they have different? And it turns out they wanted to build a payments platform, a digital payments platform to enable large issuers, large banks on top of that. So that's what got me excited. So fast forward a couple of years, two and a half, three years, we, we built MasterPass, which directly competes with Visa Checkout and, and PayPal. For folks in the room who don't know what MasterPass is, can you give a, just a brief synopsis of what it is? Sure, it's a consumer wallet. So when you, when you go, onto the, go onto a website and you click the button that says uh, pay with PayPal, it's very similar to that. Uh, it's you pay with MasterPass. Oh, and it also works on all channels, which means that it works on you know, tap and pay, um, you know, mobile web, uh, obviously, and, and app to app, all of that, all of those channels, right? So yeah, I think, I think the idea was that, so, you know, MasterCard is all about enabling our customers, our banks, and so the idea was to actually enable big issuers. So uh, two and a half, three years down, you know, we built MasterPass, we built, um, you know, CityPay. Uh, we, we partnered with City on CityPay. We, you know, Bank of America built a wallet on top of our platform, Capital One, um, you know, Santander, you name it, all the, all the, some of the largest, biggest issuers in the world, right? So that was exciting. Um, so you talk about building a platform. There's a lot associated with that, right? So first yeah. you have to, on your own, have a sort of a platform foundation. Uh, and I'm assuming at that particular time, ambitions were high and maybe MasterCard wasn't maybe set up to deliver on some of those promises of building a platform. So can you kind of walk through the steps that, that, that you took inside of your organization to really build that platform? Yeah, absolutely. So I think, um, so when I, you know, when, when I first came in, we were just about to get onto the agile journey. So it was really about getting our teams correctly aligned to deliver value, right? right? So that was really, really important. Uh, really thinking about, well, if we are building a platform, what, what do you need? So we, just, we, we figured out that, hey, you know, that I'm, we have to re-architect our code completely to move to microservices. So domain-driven design, bounded context-led microservices. Uh, that was a big part of our journey. And then last but not the least, being able to actually have a you know, developer productivity like an, an elasticity and all the benefits that you get with moving to the clouds. So we, we used PCF, we partnered with Pivotal Labs. Um, with, we had them in our offices you know, doing a eight to 10 week you know, session. We tried to get our wallet on the, on, the, on the cloud platform. We already got a switch on the cloud platform. So it was really a lot of fun and learning for the teams and we had a great we had great output at the end of it. Yeah, and so now you're on to the next challenge. Can you talk about your role at City? Um, what your task with achieving inside of sort of a, a new organization that you're inheriting? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, so, uh, you know, this is the part of a group called TTS, Treasury yeah. and Trade Services. By the way, how many, of, how many people here actually work at, have worked at a bank? Obviously, I, I see a fairly good number. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't know much about TTS before actually before I actually started you know interviewing for this job. Um, so this is what TTS does, right? This is City is a really big franchise, 200-year franchise. We have relationships across the world, across countries. 
you know, with regulators everywhere where we can go do banking. And, uh, and nobody else really has that broad, the scale. Uh, you know, the scale of like the global scale, right? City was out there very early trying to get this done. Um, and so long story short, today we move close to $4 trillion a day, right? And uh, $4 trillion of trade, payments, you know, cash management, basically liquidity, all of that for some of our largest enterprise and corporate customers. Um, and, and that was a big number, you know, and I, and I, I looked at like, okay, so what does that mean? It's, it means 1.5 quadrillion a year. So I don't know about you, but I've, I've never done anything quadrillion in my life. <laughs> this is the first for you? I, I don't know what comes after that, <laughs> you know. Um, so, so, so anyway, it, it's lots of, lots of uh, you know, big dollar volume and also big transaction volume. Uh, believe it or not, we actually do you know, more transaction volume uh, than some consumer payment options that are out there, and you know, that'll completely stay unnamed. Right, yeah, no, uh, when, you, but, when you told me that, that was, yeah. that was definitely surprising, right? Because yeah. you think yeah, of yeah. the consumer side being uh, such higher volume. Um, so you're, you're, you're assimilating yourself inside of a new role um, where transformation is at the heart of uh, what you're trying to do to achieve the business outcomes that your, your business stakeholders are sort of setting for you. Um, as you look to um, partner with these new stakeholders, uh, getting an understanding of where they want to go, and then more, more, maybe more importantly, helping them understand the journey that you're going to be on uh, because the, 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 the end result, the finish line is out there, but there's such a, a long transformational journey. Can you talk about sort of just the expectation setting that you've been going through through your first couple of months at, at City? Yeah, that's a great question. So, so you know, Mike, um, you know, you can read like tons of articles online <laughs> and know what the end state is, right? I think the a technology executive's job is about how do you take some, you know, a legacy application from where they are to the end state, and it's really about the steps in the evolution versus the end state, yeah. right? So a big part of that obviously is working with the business yeah. and helping them understand. So I've heard everything from, well, if you're going to Agile, you don't need requirements anymore. <laughs> um, well, and that's, that's not true. Uh, so, so, so I've heard a lot of different things, and, and, and rightfully so, you know, because these guys are focused on their business and their products that they're building, right. and they understand the markets really well. They're not focused on the constantly changing and evolving technology landscape, right? right? Yep. And so, so really it was about, hey, you, you know, so when we, when we went through this journey, we came back and said, um, in the last, so I've spent about three and a half months. In the three and a half months, I've spent most of my time doing deep dives, really understanding the people, the process, the technology, right? right? And as a part of that, we came up with a three-pronged approach of what we will do. One is complete move to Agile, scale Agile framework. So what does that look like? Like how many teams? Are we talking 10 teams? Are we talking? 60 scrum teams. Wow. So for those who worked at banks, everything is like this big, right? Right. It's always thousands and tens of thousands of engineers. Um, 60 scrum teams, um, we are, and you know, moving from, I mean, would Amazon go do scale Agile framework? Probably not. Right. Uh, this is the right next step for us, right? We, are, we have a high dependency set of applications. This is the right next step for us when you're going from monolith to you know, microservices. Second, again, a very, the same thing that we had at MasterCard, we have the similar problem here, which is you know, moving from a large monolith to, like, uh, to microservices, and again, doing it the right way, right? So domain-driven design-led, microservices-led, uh, I'm sorry, uh, con uh, bounded context-led microservices. Right. Uh, and, that was, and that's really important. It's very important for those who've done this before. It's very important to get this right um, early, yeah. right? This, the, the design part, it's, it's a little harder to go and change things up once you've defined what your microservices and your, you know, you, you know, what your domains are, your microservices are, your nanoservices are, et cetera, et cetera. Right. I think what's interesting, just sitting down with you, uh, and it's been refreshing to me, is IT executives who are in a similar spot, I think tend to concentrate, uh, and this is where they fall down, on vanity metrics, right? How many applications did we deploy last quarter? How many projects were brought in uh, at the end of the year uh, under a green status, status and were successful? 
you very much focus in on the business side. You focus in on uh, really the value that your organization is going to deliver, not only back to your business partners, right, but the, into the hands of their customers, the, the technology that you are, are delivering and the value that you're providing is you know, top of line on your scorecard. Can you explain that and the importance and, and I guess, the, the philosophy behind that? Yeah, absolutely, right? So, um, so I guess I gotta give PayPal all the credit for this. So when, we, when we built anything at PayPal, it was always about the end user. It was always about the end user, right? So, you know, we, we put metrics around anything we built. I remember building next-gen checkout, which was supposed to, you know, improve our checkout like by a few percentage points, which basically means millions of dollars for PayPal you know, on the conversion from the time somebody clicks the PayPal button to the time you actually buy the product. And I think it underperformed the existing one. The next gen one underperformed the existing one for a year. We didn't, you know, we didn't go live with it. I mean, we, we, we kept it at a very low percentage of our traffic. Uh, and so point being, we are, it's really important to be uber focused on what true value are you really adding for the consumer. I think Amazon has a really good way of doing this where they say, for anything that you're asked to do, ask so what three times, right? And I, and I sort of, that sort of gelled with how we did things also at PayPal, similar, similar to what we want to do in Citi, right? And we have a really large customer client base. Right. There, is a, there, is a, there are clients that lead a lot of complexity and then are clients that need a lot of simplicity. And we worked with Solstice to figure out exactly, you know, how do we think about the user journeys for that large group of clients, yep. but that, have, that want a simpler experience. Yep. And so if you can go out and create something of value for, your, for 80% you know, of your user base, well, that's really, really meaningful. Right. right? So I, th I, think, I think having that priority it is really, really important in, in how you go about tackling business problems. And your business partners, are they behind this, not only this uh, sort of change that they'll have to go through and transformation to adopt safe, but also this product mindset, as opposed to uh, from what we've seen in organizations, spe specifically large banks, it's uh, very operations focused first. You know, product that mindset is you know two or three rungs uh, down on the ladder. Yeah, and, and the business is, is definitely tr you know more product focused, and what we are trying to accomplish in partnership with them is you know we're saying well what will you get at what point in your evolution? Right. Right. So. Let's say you went from a waterfall model that was highly horizontal to a verticalized model because it was the right time. Again, it was the right time to do that. Um, let's, say that let's say that happened, right? What value are you ex with the business get at that time? Well, let's say uh, if you were delivering this much before, you're delivering this much, but then you know, if your pipeline doesn't change, right. you're still trying to squeeze everything through that. So right. really, what value are you, are you creating? So you've got to be able to explain that to the business every step along the way, yeah. right? That's great. Um, let's switch focus now and talk more about technology, which is actually your organization, right? So you're doing a lot of enabling and educating on the business side of the house, but where is change really starting for you inside of uh, the organization that you, that you own inside of City? And I'm gonna uh, dual prong this question. A lot of executives, again, who on the IT side who are in a similar spot, um, have that same sort of mandate to be more agile and enable the application portfolio to be much more nimble so that uh, it can meet the demands of the business. When IT executives sit in those types of situations, they really don't know where to start. We're looking at an app portfolio, trying to figure out, you know, do I pick off the most Im important application first? So maybe, you know, how and where do you get started specifically in, in, in Citibank? Yeah, again, great, great, great question, right? So, so, so the way I look at this is, let's say you're going through any kind of transformation. You have a legacy app, you're trying to build something new, you want to build microservices along the way. It has to service both the legacy and the new. Yep. Now, what do you pick? You can't pick something, a capability that is really small, like you can't pick Hello World. Right. And on the flip side, you can't take your bread and butter. You know, TTS is a $10 billion business for Citi and right. $3.5 billion in profits. Uh, you can't take something that is really big and, and put it on it, right? right. So you've got to pick the right, uh, the, the right capability. 
And one of the metrics that I really liked about picking the right capability is how testable is it? Right. Right. If you want to independently release this capability, how truly testable, uh, you know, is can you do it at the API level? Is it API automation? Can you can you apply that? And we found something very, you know, that fits that perfectly well. Like, you know, we do something where a payment instruction comes in, and and we basically apply a bunch of validation, augmentation, and you know, uh, enhancement to that to that payment instruction, to make it fit the formats that we want. Right. Right. A great example of a capability that can be actually pulled out because in the end, it's literally one row that goes into a database. Right. And so you can. You know, you can run your existing stack, your new stack. You can run it side by side for a while. Right. Validate um, it while it's validated. Yeah. What exactly? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. We talked uh, again about the transformation on the business side, but let's talk about the transformation inside of technology as a whole. Mm -hmm. Can you highlight and, and sort of uh, dive into some of the changes that you're making on the technology side as a whole? Yeah, absolutely. So, so first off, you know, going from a monolithic application and building mindset to a distributed environment, uh, you know, is is a is a is it's a different type of a type type of development and type of you know product building. It's a right? huge leap. It's right? a huge it's a huge leap. Um, I think, you know, the tech landscape is what's strewn with dead bodies of people <laughs> who've come out and promised the next best thing. Right. And, and then fail at it. So we're doing our absolute best in understanding what the best practices are, right? right as you go develop in a distributed environment. Right. So one of the things we're doing is we're, we're writing down a set of principles, right? Principles apply to how you build applications, to how you will release applications, to how, like one of the things we talk about a lot, we say is, hey, green CI equals release. Right, and that's Love like that. that's become a little mantra inside of our group, saying, "Do not rest until green a green CI equals release." Right, right. Going back to the vanity metric, right? You don't you don't want J unit hundred percent test coverage that doesn't actually give you quality. Right, and the confidence to release, right? And the quality exactly. And so and so and so, we, we create a whole list list of like, hey, we absolutely need blue green deployments. Right, right? We need twenty four seven. We we need a, we need a host of you know platform level things that we need uh, to even release our very first app out there. Right. And so you balance that pressure to like put something out there, um, but with, with hey, you know, your, your platform truly has to be ready. Right. Can you talk about, so you asked for a show of hands of folks in the room who've, who've worked in financial services. This is broadly applied or, or, or present inside of large organizations. That traditional application uh, development divide uh, between app dev and operations. Can you talk about sort of how a DevOps world uh, works inside of your new organization at City moving forward? Yeah, absolutely. So, so we're still in the process of making changes, right? But I think, as everybody knows, DevOps is now very much a part of what you know, developer, development organizations now own, right? right? This is all about enabling their future. And so one of the simplest things to go after is is validating the pipeline. Right. So what, what does that mean? Well, we have a pipeline. You know, we have different applications for different parts inside of that pipeline. Does it all work seemingly, uh, seemingly like seamlessly? Right. Uh, does a green CI equals release? Right. Can you actually do that? And if you can't, and, and it's funny because I actually I, I call somebody at Pivotal, uh, you know, who I worked with at Mastercard, and I say, you know what? I want to really validate this this thing. You know, what's the what's the way I should go about doing this? Right. And of course. The answer was just like we did at Mastercard. You take the application and you know take an application, put it through it, right? right. Put it through the ringer. Same formula, right? Yeah, same formula. So, so, so that's what we did, right? We we took the app, we're taking the application and we're we're putting it through the ringer and trying to see, like, let's take a very simple capability like schema validation, something super simple. Right. Can that run through the pipeline completely? Right. So, so that that's that's that sort of that's that's our approach going right. forward. I know that you also um, take a lot of pride and in, in, in work very closely uh, in, in certain situations. Uh, and I know you talked about doing this, uh, applying the same uh, technique at Citibank, which is basically you know, working two or three levels down in the organization, asking people to solve problems and sort of coaching them along the way. Can you maybe talk about your approach there, understanding what people's mindsets are and, and really how you're ch trying to sh uh, shape the change as to different ways of solving problems moving forward inside of this new world? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's another good question, right? So one of the challenges that I've seen, right, is people, you know, tech, tech people have years and years of experience. Uh, they use that experience to come out and estimate projects. Right. They see complexity, they buffer that. Right. Right. And what you end up doing is if you keep using your experience to do that, you're not accelerating your learning right. in the process. And so I, when I thought about what Amazon does, for example, in this particular case, is they, do, they have an inspection process, right? right? So where you um, come up with a plan, with a project plan, and allow people to inspect the project plan and provide feedback, and a ton of feedback, right? Um, Obviously what that does is, as you are moving from a monolithic environment to a new discipline, which is new learnings, Absolutely. if you can't leave behind what you learned in that environment, right. right, you have a problem. Right. And this is really the process of actually helping you through that. Right. So one of the things that we've also talked about is the fact that uh, City is trying to build uh, an organization and a, a new culture on top of the foundational uh, engineering that you have in place today. Can you talk about you know, the support that you're getting from within the enterprise to really go out and build uh, you know, worldwide level uh, scale talent in terms of your organization, how you go out and uh, attract that talent, how you retain that talent, et cetera? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, um, so City, I don't know if you guys know this, I think Pivotal is, uh, PCF has been with, at, at City for like more than three years, right? Yeah. So City has been a very early adopter of technology in different parts. City's huge, by the way, right? right? So it, they have been adopters, uh, and we have the support from a, from, a, from a central architecture organization that evaluates technologies, et cetera. Um, you can bring them new technologies that they will evaluate on your behalf. Right. You know, so there are, there, are, there are existing processes that allow you to move, to navigate through all of this. But as we go through this transformation journey, right, we have a set of really committed engineers at City. They have great understanding, great, great understanding of the existing applications, great subject matter expertise. We want to pair them with people who have ex expertise in the cloud domain. Right. Right. And aren't in modern in, day architecture. They're not coming in specifically with uh, experience in banking, right? They don't have, you know, potentially, I mean, they potentially could, but they don't come in with two decades worth of banking. But yeah. that's where you're, you're doing the pairing and enabling there. Uh, definitely not looking for the two decades in banking, <laughs> but, but definitely looking for the guys with the, you know, who have the platform and cloud and microservices background, right? Um, we are looking to hire uh, everywhere, you know, there are obviously multiple cities everywhere from in the New York City area, um, you know, Delaware, Canada, Dublin, and India, right? right. So it, there's a lot of hiring that is going on right now uh, in enabling these teams. So you've got people, process, technology, all of these changes happening at once. Uh, again, I know you're relatively new to your role. What does the next three to six months look like for you? Yeah, the next, the next three to six months is about, um, well, in, in my specific case, is about continuing to talk about what, you know, what new modern architecture, software architecture looks like right. at City, champion it, and then be able to take a capability and move it to the cloud. Right, plant right? A, a, flag of, a, a flag of success, a win somewhere in the organization. Exactly. Right? Win you know, gain confidence, next step. Yeah, right. that's great. Well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I don't know if we have time for any questions. We do have time for a couple of questions. Anyone with a, a particular question for a who? Don't all go at once. <laughs> Unless there's any other questions, uh, we will break there. Thank you. We'll be around here uh, for the next couple of minutes. So if you have any questions, please feel free to come up. Thank you. Thank you.